in the talk in which he assigned the uh, presentation or asked me to give the presentation, she gave me some topics. And one was my journey through the profession in life, but also a number of other things that I'll address uh, through the presentation or I hope to address. So my journey really with, because it's a lot of prosthetics, orthotics people here, um, goes back professionally for me is 1981. Uh, that's when I became a student in prosthetics and orthotics at George Brown College in Toronto. <clears throat> that's where my career started. Before then, I was a student in kinesiology at the university. Um, and um, sort of found that prosthetics and orthotics was my path that, uh, that I followed. And I'm very happy that I did that. Um, my journey here at Mobility India it took me about an hour to find this photo, but I found it. Uh, it goes back to 2007 when I first came here, and that's uh, Ritu and Al Albina and Dr. Sarwar from Pakistan sitting with, um, on my right. And uh, we were here, I think, for the evaluation of the Category 2 single discipline programs at that time. So this is the first time I came to Bangalore back in 2007. So there's so my journey with MI really continues to today, and, and um, I'm very happy to help where I can. Focusing on my career, which goes back to, I mean, it's over 30 years now. It's, it's amazing how fast time passes. Um, but I think, what, how did I get here? How did I get to the position I, how did I do the things that I did? I really never thought a lot about it. Um, but the one thing that I thought of that was common uh, was this theme, I was asked. I think that epitomizes really along the pathway that I followed, it was these three words. And I'll sort of try to explain what I mean by it. I was asked. Um, these are some of the things that was mentioned in my introduction. Um, I was a student at George Brown College. I became a faculty. I became the director coordinator. I was there for 28 years, and now I teach part-time. I never asked for that position. Someone offered it to me. I never looked to be the head of the school be a teacher it's really something that someone came and asked me if I would do that. My first job was very similar, Hamilton Health Sciences, which is west of Toronto. I was a faculty at the University of Guelph. My old teachers asked me to come back and teach. I ended up teaching there for 20 years. I never planned that. Uh, ISPO, really, the journey started for me, ISPO, 1997-98, and Sepp Heim, Mr. Heim asked me to become a member of the society and get involved in ISPO. Boundless is the practice that I own, I run. And um, I was asked to start that. I didn't start that on my own in 1988. I just wanted to be, be a practitioner that, that was current, that my skills were current. When I was a teacher, I felt if I just teach, how can I tell students what to do if I don't practice? Really, Boundless started because of that. Only the idea that I would continue to practice. These other things are very similar. OPC, Orthotics Prosthetics Canada, Exceed, you may know, was Cambodia Trust. I'm a board member there and also Human Study. Those are things that people approach me to be part of. So I, I, I bring, I raise those things because I never had a master plan to be somebody. I never really had an idea. I want to be a president or an owner of a company. I really had no, no, no thought to do that. Um, and I never really wished for any role or position. I didn't want to be a professor or a coordinator. Or... I was happy to come in the field, be a certified orthotist, see patients, take care of people, but all these other things happened. So I was asked is what you can see why I brought that up. And the reason is, but, but then I asked, but why was I asked? So I go back and reflect on that, and, I, and it's obvious to me in time, and something that others will say to me, other people saw things in me that maybe I didn't when I was starting my career, but other people saw things in, in me. 
And I think, I thought, what are those things that people saw in me? I think these, I just start with these one words, obligation, duty, uh, inspired, heart, fearless, those words come to mind. And, and are some of the words behind the reason where I am today. And I'll try to expand on some of these things. And maybe you can connect with it in some way. You're all going to have your own journey. You're all going to have some path. Uh, but maybe my experiences can, you can th make, me, make me think about those kinds of things. So I say the pieces of the puzzle. What are the things that uh, brought me here? Well, one for sure is endless family support and encouragement. For me, that was always there. The family roots, I'm, I'm sure for all of you, are critical in, in who you are, your parents, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents. For me, it was no different. A very critical part. Having mentors that, and uh, or it was, a, it was a big part of, um, of my career, and those mentors listening to me and me listening to them. I think that was a big part. I'll, I'll expand more on these. Being inspired by others and by things that I've seen. My wife can, can concur with this. Being very stubborn, I think, is a good trait. It's, about, it's not always that good, but I think many times it is good. Uh, and I, I got to a point where I was really willing to, to, to overcome hurdles and climb mountains. Uh, I think that and being fearless and, and having no fear to take a step forward, never thinking about it too much, but realizing oh, this is a direction I have to go and I'm going to get there. Um, leading with heart and following and letting the head follow. I'll probably come back to that. And having vision, I think that's one thing that I was born with. I'm not sure if it's something you can develop, but I've always been able to see down the road and have an eye, uh, uh, always see things in the future or a direction. I think that's something that people always saw that I had. So I go back to family. I, I think this is very inspirational for my story. Uh, my family are immigrants from the Ukraine back in the 1890s. They came to Canada around 1895 and they were just, my great grandparents had nothing. They were peasant farmers in the Ukraine. The Canadian government gave them an opportunity, stuck them out in the middle of Canada and nowhere in land that wasn't that great and they found a way to survive. And um, I think that story is a good one because you realize that these people on the bottom right sacrificed for you. And you have a duty then to carry on that dream. And along with that is my own family, <clears throat> my parents, my aunts, uncles, that's me in the bottom left there, if you can see. If I, if I go back to pictures of that time, you can always see I'm surrounded by my aunts, my uncles, uh, <clears throat> my parents, and so on. It's quite emotional looking at those pictures. But that's a big part uh, <clears throat> of my journey. Mentors. So I've had fantastic mentors. I'm not sure if you know any of these people. Carl Ruder and Don Weaver were my teachers when I was a student. Uh, very inspirational, and until this and today, they still are. All of these people are, except Seth Heim, unfortunately, passed away this past April. Jeff Fernie, who's a well known bioengineer in Canada, uh, an amazing man who's really uh, counseled me when I've asked. Seth Heim brought me into ISPO. It really is, uh, was like a second father uh, to me. So those people are critical to uh, really helping me get to where I am. So I, I think for all of you, you'll see, you'll probably, you'll have your own mentors, people from different parts of your life and that, use them, talk to them, look for guidance, you'll, you'll know who those people are. I just want to talk about, so inspiration, I talked about being inspired, of course the mentors always inspire. I always look to global leaders. Um, these days I don't watch the news that much because the media is so crazy these days. But taking global leaders, not just politicians, but people who have led in different ways, humanitarians, 
listening, watching how they do things, listen to how they speak. Uh, I learned a lot from from those kinds of people. My own patients over the years, I started seeing my, my own clients' patients back in 1983. When I started my own practice in 1988, I saw a lot of young children, families, and I learned a lot about their struggles and how they overcame things. So your own clients, when you graduate and you get in the field, you'll learn a lot from the people you, you, you see, that you treat. My students, I've had lots of students. Uh, I still teach today. I have this 30 uh, some years of students. That, they're all over the Canada. Um, I've learned a lot from a lot of my students. I have some very special students. Uh, in their journeys and in their lives, I've learned a lot from those people. My 89 year old mother, I have to mention, she still comes in four days a week and works in my practice. <laughs> that in itself is amazing. And many other things. So I've been inspired by lots of people along the way. Um, I wanted to come back to this, uh, about climbing mountains. Um, I think we all need to, you learn the most when you you, you have to deal with adversity, you have to deal with difficult things. To accomplish those things and reach your destination, you'll find the journey to get there will be the best part of your life. Uh, and, and don't be scared of taking those journeys. Some of them, a lot of them are very, are very difficult, but they seem difficult, but to overcome those things, it's something I've talked a lot about with, with mentors of mine. Uh, this topic comes up quite often. I think in time for all of you, you're very young, most of you, uh, you realize it's all about that, the journey and getting, and getting there. You'll get to a destination, you'll reflect more back on how you got there. I said uh, stubbornness for sure and being hard-headed, I think that's made me achieve things, just to keep going and and being stubborn, I think that I don't have to say much more on that. Following with heart and leading with a head, really. And have a vision, having a vision and being able to see the possibilities in front of you. I think that's for me, again, I mentioned vision and how important that's been. I think uh, I'll move on. So, other things, others saw things in me, and I think. You know, when I talk about all those things that I just talked about, these are the kinds of things people saw in me. My work ethic, my determination, my ability to lead and be an authentic leader, not be a leader that's outside my own personality, but to lead within your who you are. Don't try to be someone else you're not. People will see that. They'll see, they'll see, they'll see through that. Commitment. Being driven and having passion. Those things, I think, are the things people saw in me uh, over the years and why I was asked. Um, and I think that if I reflect, I really haven't done this before when Ritu asked me to do this. I haven't really thought about it in this way altogether. It's really the first time I've ever talked about it in this way. So, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I have some questions for you. This isn't just one way. Uh, you two mentioned a couple things to me. I thought, well, what kinds of things can I ask you? And I think the first thing that came up was this. Why are you here? Why are you sitting there today? What's the reason that you got here? Um, why have you taken the career path you have? Uh, I'd be interested to know. I, you have to be fearless maybe to get up and answer. But I'd be interested to hear your, some of your stories if you're, if you're willing to share. Why, why are you here today? I mean, I can, I, can, I can tell you why I'm here and why I came in the field. I mean, a lot of it was just really looking for things that I was passionate about, that I was inspired with. I was very good at physics and math, but I also loved human movement, that kind of 
uh, academic area. I was always mechanically inclined in terms of the engineering, my engineering mind. And I think I wanted to work with people, not with bridges or be a civil engineer or a mechanical engineer. And I, I just fell into, I met Jeff Fernie and I met some of my mentors and I applied to p and and it just felt right. And, I, and I'm here 30 some years later. I never, it's amazing, really. Do any of you have similar stories? Anybody willing to share? No? I hear it's a big crowd. Once I saw the crowd, I don't know how many people are coming to see. It's a big crowd. I mean, all of you had lots to say at the conference the two days that you saw me. But, um, okay. Some of you have come from distances. My friend from Canada. How did you get here? You saw me here in 2000, what, 10? Nine. I don't remember. Yeah. Yes. How did you end up? What did you come here for? What did you, why did you come in the field? You don't want to talk about it. Okay. What's, what's very cool here is I know some of the people in here. I knew I met, I met them before. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you've all talked about it. There's a brave man. I mean, instead of me always telling you, I'd like to hear some of your stories. Good morning, sir. Good morning, one and all here. Actually, I uh, came here uh, through my mentor. Actually, my mentor is my auntie. Uh, she is also a piano professional. I'm from Bangladesh. Uh, I have started my journey in 2015. Uh, before joining here, actually, I was uh, in my country. I was uh, doing in other subject bachelor studies. But uh, when I saw her, uh, actually, uh, she is also having a disability, and I saw her struggling from childhood itself. And uh, <clears throat> one more thing, I am sharing also. Uh, I also born with a uh, uh, Actually, uh, she was the member in, in our uh, family that oh, uh, she has been taking care of me like they are much conscious as I was born in 1995 in a village so that time people are not that much ever about club what is club food and uh, all those things but as she was in that profession she was knowing on the professional things and all so because of her taking care and my family support only I had uh, that cured uh, uh, on that time so from childhood onwards, like I was knowing about disability, what is disability and how people are struggling and those. And when I saw that, uh, as she is also disabled, but uh, she is struggling a lot to uh, get a good position in this field. As also, she was, uh, uh, inspired me to join. My vision will be to serve, serve the people properly and whatever mentors I will get in future, so I will uh, like to follow them properly. That's all. Thank you. Sir. Good morning all, uh, I'm Arpita Das, I'm doing BPO first year. I completed my graduation in BSc Biotech Logic. So here I'm, I'm here because of my father. He's working in this field last uh, more than uh, 28 years in the rural areas in India. They don't know about uh, prosthetics and orthotics, even the our generation. We are very modernized, that's why we use the Google and many subjects, prosthetics, orthotics. It's related to both the fields. So for me, I came here to explore the things and the mentality of the people, the vision. I, we are here, one by one, uh, we make the million mindset up. Uh, actually, when I joined this program, and the Brussels, I thought this is, that time it was 1990. I did not have about, I did not have any idea about piano, so I entered our center, that's BBC White, because of my uncle. My uncle was a picky and big, working there, and I uh, enjoyed with them, and I took experience only about this one. I was working step by step, step by step, 
But about knowledge, I don't have any knowledge about the process and our process. I continue my study in university in another side, not in that piano. Uh, and I finished my uh, university that time. In 2000, uh, 2001, I visited uh, Iran for uh, one for three month training. So I get some idea about this one. So in 2005 also I visited Jordan for th three months training. And I have experience with that. But for hand, it's a skill. We are good. We know everything. We have a lot of cases. We are enjoying this field. We are doing well. Actually, we asked about this. We need to more knowledge. So we asked our uh, sponsor, ICRC, we need to study about this, uh, this field. There is no any university in Yemen or Arab countries. There is no any university. So the uh, search and find this in my. I joined there in 2006, July. I get a lot of knowledge. I always enjoyed so much. So I understand more and more about this field. And I came back for uh, working. In my working, I am working now as a director, of technical director. I uh, lead the group of the process and the audiences, and we are doing well. So we interest to continue our degree of this field because there is no any degree in Yemen except the people who study now bachelor. Well, I start to suggest to come for CAT to continue our uh, degree. So we are our vision to continue our service to the handicap in Yemen because the situation, situation in Yemen there is a lot, a lot of cases because the war and the uh, conjugal deformity, a lot of cases. We our vision to serve the people and move on. Thank you. And just showing also the power of education. That one thing we we learned over the years in ISPO and facilities like Mobility India and others around the world. How important professional education is. Going through and committing to this is really important because you, you, your recognition, you have a you, you have a profession that you built in yourself, gives you something to grow from. So the baseline education is really critical and is really important. So having facilities like this is Things to throw at you in terms of questions. So 
and I may, may skip by this one, but it's something to think about. How do, what do you hope to accomplish in your life? I think it's something that you should always reflect on. Always keep that in your mind. Where do you want what things are you passionate about? What things do you really want to accomplish in terms of you know things that um, stir something in you that excites you? Um, that are something that's in your mind quite a bit. I, I think if you, you can always reflect on those things, no matter how old you are, I'm 64 now, I still think about this question. What do I want to do? What things, what are, where do I want to go next? What, what, are, what are things that make me uh, excited when I get up in the morning? I, what are those things that I really want to do? And then I think we've, touched a little bit on this, I think, where can you contribute professionally and beyond? So in, in your professional life, when you graduate, I think you'll find a way, and maybe there are some things you really get excited about. Maybe it's research, maybe it's looking after a certain kind of patient, maybe it's, you know, some sort of, you know, new ideas that you can bring to the profession and share them. I think the other thing we have to do is a small, we're a small profession globally, prosthetists, orthotists, prosthetic robotic technicians, prosthetic robotic professionals. It's a small field. We're a fairly tight family globally, but we need to share. We need to find ways that we share with each other. And, and uh, I encourage you, all of you, don't ever be scared or fearful of coming to a conference and presenting. I, I really enjoyed the posters and the presentations. A lot of you presented posters. I chatted and talked with a number of you. Excellent work. Um, so continue that. Continue the ideas that you've had. Yet. Some of you had some amazing innovation, I mean innovative ideas. So I think there's lots of things you can contribute, but keep, keep moving on that direction. How do you know what you'd like to do and what are things, what, what things are you good at and how do you know? That's a, that's a question, that's not an easy one. Um, maybe I'll throw that out there. Does anyone have any comments on that? How do you know what you like to do? What is it, when you think about the things you like to do, how do you, what is that, it's hard to phrase this one. What makes you, um, how do you know what things you really like to do and what things that you want to do and that you're good at. Is there, is there any things that tell you that? Do you do this self-reflection? Do you how do you how do you approach that? I think that's that's another one that it's not an easy question, but it's something I think you it's again self-reflection. Um, you know, it's so easy to go down a path and just do things. Day to day, I do the same thing, but I think you've got to always step back and say, "What is it? Do I really want to do it today? What do I want to do tomorrow? What? How can I get there?" Um, you know, and, and, and along with that, what, what am I really good at, and how can I use those skills and abilities to take me on on a journey? I think you've got to reach out that way. Um, I think everyone has their own way of doing that. So it's a hard one to talk about because I probably have my own way of thinking about it, how I, you know, how I reflect that way. But everyone has their own way of doing that. But I think those are important questions for all of you to, to think about, um, and not just take things for granted or listen to what someone else said. You know, you have mentors, but there's a lot of people, and I've seen it in my own life with my students and my family. People tell others, "Well, oh, you should do this. Or you should do that." You don't, don't have to. You have to do what's right for you. Don't. Don't do something for someone else. Make sure it's for you and, and not for others. And I think it's so easy because well, I have students who hate me. You know, well, what are you here for? Well, my mother and father told me I can't. I don't. I'm not good at this. I, I don't. I don't like being here. So we have to change that. Um, so th those are the kinds of things I think you need to, in terms of these questions, to reflect on. I think this one I'd like to ask, put this out, and I'd like to hear some answers on this because you're, a lot of you are I mean, you're graduating at a certain point, um, and, and I think, do you, do you know what your employers, your future, the people who will hire you when you graduate, do you know what they're looking for? Why would someone want to hire you? You can ask yourself, why, does someone, why would someone want to hire me? What would make them 
one employee is. So what do you bring to the people who hire you? What do you bring to them? A lot of times my students these days, they always like, they always think you should they, the employer owes them something. They don't owe you anything. children that come through the door, those adults that need or different orthoses, the families that come with, with, with the clients in our facility, I want to make sure that you're going to take care of them. I want them taken care of at a high level, and, and, uh, and you're going to give extra to those people. So as an employer, I'm looking for people who are going to really work hard and, and, and contribute. And the rewards are there. The rewards are always there, but they're not just given, they have to be earned. So I'm very lucky to have this staff. That's for sure. Uh, I've got a couple more slides We're coming to almost well, 11 30. Thoughts on the profession? I think this is, you're coming into a profession that's a caring profession. That's important. So that was some of the things I just said. You have to look out. You're coming to a profession where you're not making something and saying, "Here, take it away, go home." You have to take. You're putting this on somebody. You have to take care of that person. Not just more than the biomechanics and the, you know, the gate parameters you're looking at. It's 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 taking care of that person and making them feel good, encouraging them. Uh, don't forget, even though we're a technical profession. 
for a caring profession. And it's the one thing I learned over the years, being an ISPO evaluator, and I, I think I've visited many, many countries, many schools. The one thing I learned is this. How many times do I hear from the clients that come in for the exams or come into a facility like Mobility India or wherever, they always want to be looked after. Sure, they, they want a good prosthesis and an orthosis, but they want to feel like someone's taking care of them. And that's a universal thing. Not just in one place, it's everywhere. Where do you think our profession is headed? Do you think in 10 years there's going to be still prosthetics in our topics? You think, are you, are you going to do things differently than you are today? You know, and I learned, you know, taking casts and modifying casts and molding plastics or laminating with resins. Do you think, how do you see that going forward? Do you think in 10 years we're going to be doing it the same way? No. Is there any thoughts on that? The world is changing quick. It's going to impact you more than you know. And it's not just, and you see it right across right across the world. How many other professions, photography, things like uh, architecture, which is trying to think of different things, different professions that have been disrupted by other technologies coming in. Don't keep your eyes open and encompass those things because some, we're going we're gonna to change the way we do things. I, I believe it. There's no doubt in my mind things will be different than they are today. And where we're going to head it, if we don't encompass it as a profession, I think we had this discussion the other day, we, we don't encompass these things and find a way to bring in partners and encompass these things, we may be extinct. We may not be here in 10 years. That's, that's an extreme opinion, but you can't, you've got to keep that in your mind. Don't be complacent and don't take it for granted. And you as a generation, I think, and I say this to my students, I teach a class to our technicians and our clinical students on professional issues. This is one of our topics. And I have them sort of do a strategic plan dealing with challenges. We have some big challenges ahead. I think your generation has the biggest challenges of all time in our field. You're coming into a field, I think, where there's lots of things that are gonna happen. And I think you, you, will, you will, as a group, and all students, graduates, and prosthetics orthotics around the world have to meet challenges coming up. And how we do that, will, I think, will determine a lot. And it's hard to see, again, you're looking at vision, where is this going to go? So I think those are the th things you have to think about. And again, don't be complacent. I think the, I'll leave it on at that. The big picture, I had a couple other thoughts before I finish. And, uh, you can discuss whatever you like that when, when I'm done, if you have some other ideas or thoughts you want to talk about. But today's world, really, sometimes it's great, the things we've got. You know, I'm more an IT guy than most people realize. You know, between my iPhone and my computers, I set up networks in our facility, and I'm very good at that. I, even though I wasn't trained, I'm very good in that area. But it's crazy these days. I can't walk down the street without someone with their smartphone in their face walking into me all the time. And I think, what is it? Have you found that crazy? Where so that's all we do is look at this, this object and we walk around all day like this? Don't forget communication with one another. You know, talking to one another, building relationships. Sepp Heim, my mentor for one of my second father for PO, he really stressed to me, don't forget. Building relationships and building strong relationships makes the world go round. Those are personal relationships, not something through Facebook, not through something Instagram. Those are great tools. Don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I love connecting with my family through Facebook because we're spread around the world by students, but there's a limit. There's a limit to that. And human personal communication, building relationships, I always think of Mr. Hine when I think of this. Don't don't forget those things like that. And try to filter all the, all the craziness in the world today. It's crazy out there. Uh, and it's hard these days with the way things are to do that. But um, that will be a challenge for you, for sure. But don't forget the, per, the personal entry, the communication with each other. Taking care of the planet. That was one that really concerns me. This is outside of PO, uh, 
completely, but the way things are going and the trends that are happening, how the planet is being affected with by, you know, you call it climate change or whatever you want to call it. I think those things are big challenges for your generation, what's coming ahead and, and um, keeping that in, you know, p and is your professional life, but you have a, a human life, a life as a citizen in your country to really stand up for things you believe in. And uh, these things worry me. I'm, again, getting, getting on in, in, my, in my life. Uh, uh, but I think of your generation, I really am concerned about those things. Some parting words. I guess the last things I wanted to say were, it's, uh, I've said it I think already, be true to yourself, be, be true to yourself, be you, not someone else. Do not try to be someone else. You all have a lot to offer this world, either the profession and beyond. The other thing is time. <coughs> time just runs like you would not believe. And as you get older, time goes faster. I, I can remember today, I can still think, back to 1983 or 81, sitting in my first class in P&O at George Brown College and starting my career, it seems like yesterday. Well, that was, that's almost 30, that's a lot, you know, it's a long time ago. And uh, it's amazing. So don't take the time you have for granted, cherish it, and make sure you you, you, you don't take it for granted and um, take care of those that you care for and that you love and make sure that that's a priority for you. Don't forget those things. It's so easy to let time run. Um, and I think I think about that more and more. As you get older, you think about it more and more. And I think I'm, I'm done. I hope my journey still continues. I, I still have lots to do. I'm not going to stop my professional life. It's not something I really love being involved with what I do. I really like meeting students like yourself and, and talking about things. And, and um, it's been a great life. Uh, that's actually when I went to part time, went from full time to part time. Those are uh, all my graduates who came to the Canadian Convention and we had a celebration because I was going from full time to part time. Um, but um, yeah. I think there's there's still things to do, and uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be, but uh, I hope to keep contributing as long as I can. Uh, and on that point, I think, any, do you have any questions or things that you want to, in the time we have left, do you have anything you wanted to say or talk about or raise? Yeah, I see your hands up over, over there. Biggest challenges. So do you mean like it is much harder than your, uh, that I am so, what I mean like how do you compare our generation and that time your generation? So like if one of us wants to reach whatever position you are in, do you think he has to suffer more than whatever you suffer or it's much easier? <laughs> no, I don't think it's any, I, I think the, what there is more I don't think it's any different in terms of difficulty. I think what you'll have is more things coming. I think today's world just has so many things coming at you. I struggle day to day to keep up with all the different things I need to come up, keep up with, either as, as an educator, as a practitioner, as a leader, because every day something new happens and, and things change so fast. So I think the thing that's, that's different is how things change and how fast they change. So I think you, you have to, in the English term I think of as being on your toes, but being very aware of things around you and looking for opportunity, keeping your eyes open for opportunity. I think that's the other thing I, I didn't say. There's lots of things I could say. But opportunity is one thing. When you see opportunities, go towards them. Find out what it is. Um, a lot of times you'll build a relationship and all of a sudden you're going down a path you never saw. So keeping your eyes open for all the things. But I think change, the acceleration of change, is the biggest difference between my generation and yours. <coughs> you know the different challenges, they all come in different ways and the mountains you climb are, are different kinds of mountains. But uh, I think that would be the one thing I would say to answer, try to answer your question. Okay, thank you so much.